You're live on Facebook, Toya, so you can share it. Clef Sean, BKS1 Radio, let's go. This is Essence Atkins and this is BKS1 Radio. Hi, this is Melvin Moore and you're listening to BKS1 Radio. Yo, check it out, what's the deal? This the chef, giving a big shout out to my peoples. Big KS, you already know what it is. Salute. What's up, it's your girl Monifa and I'm hanging with BKS1 Radio. Hi, I'm Iyam LaVanzan and you're listening to BKS1 Radio. BKS Radio, baby. <laughs> hey, this is Jasmine Guy for BKS1 Radio. What's going on? This is Lamont Rucker and this is BKS1 Radio. Shout out to BKS1, the best kept damn secret in the business. Hey, what's up? This is Raven Goodwin from BET's Being Mary Jane. And shout out to BKS1. Hi, this is Leon. You're watching BKS1 Radio. BKS1. God bless y'all. Hello, 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 everybody. I waited for the applause. I waited for the applause. But hello, everybody, and welcome to the Owl Show right here on BKS1 Radio. It's your girl, Latoya Chanel. And I am just going to go ahead and get started tonight in our healing journey. I am glad that you all are joining me, and I'm happy to be back here. First, let me give you a bit of a disclaimer. The show that we had scheduled for this evening with Miss Angela Ogando uh, got pushed back until next week. We had a bit of technical difficulties. So we are going to have a great interview with her and that's just going to be pushed back until next week. So you guys are just going to have to come back. You're going to have to come back next Tuesday at seven o'clock and hear everything that she has to say because she is an amazing speaker, an amazing business woman. And I do believe that she can help us on this healing journey that we have been talking about only since last week, only since last week, everybody. So if you're new, if you're new to it, or if you missed last week, you're still good. You're still in a great position and you're still able to, to get on board with us pretty much early on so we can all heal together and uh, get started together. If you missed last week's show, it was my first time back in studio and I was talking about how the Owl Show was always about healing uh, and we were always talking about having those tough conversations just for us to heal as a people, black and brown folks to heal as a people and relearning norms and relearning uh, things that we held dear and held on to that sometimes hurt us. And I'm going to get back to that in a minute. But in the meantime, um, I shared a very personal story because uh, we've always prided ourselves on being transparent on this show. And I shared a very personal um, story about just different things that I had been going through since 2022 and how I need to um, be able to move forward and be able to heal uh even talking about coming back here, doing the radio show and just, you know, having things to talk about in different conversations. And so 
we're going to continue on with that. We're going to continue on with that for a while. As I mentioned, it's not going to be all depressing and all down. We're still going to interview some of your favorite celebrities. We're still going to interview some um, local folks who are doing great and amazing things. And you'll have days like this where it's just going to be me in studio and talking about healing. But I invite you to come along with me and I invite you to share your stories because we have a new group on Facebook, everybody. I know for the younger folks, Facebook really isn't something that you guys do anymore. You know, everybody's in TikTok. Everybody is uh, in Snapchat. Everybody's on Instagram. But for those of you that can venture on over to uh, Facebook, we have a new Al Show discussion group where we can continue the conversation uh, from, you know, what we're talking about here. And I'll also invite all of you to start the conversation. If there's something on your heart or a question that you may have, as long as it's respectful and we are just respectful expecting you know, all parties in the group. Um, I invite you to pose the question to the group and we will all chime in as well as continuing the conversations that we have, you know, from the show here. Um, to be able to, uh, you know, really get some perspective on things because it's one thing when we are just um, having conversations with some of the same folks and, you know, like-minded people, sometimes we, if we're all thinking alike, it's the same perspective, it's the same ideas, but, you know, sometimes not all the time, cause you know, we don't, we don't share our business with everybody, but sometimes it's okay to, uh, share a question that we have or something we've been pondering or meditating on, um, with a group of folk, who are good people, uh, you know, who who genuinely and generally want the best for each other, you know, share something with them and maybe get a different perspective on things. So if you got an invite, please make sure that you join that Our Show group, the discussion group on Facebook. And if you're already a part of the group, please make sure you share the group with friends who you feel like maybe can benefit from it or can add to it whatever it is. But in the meantime, just make sure you do it so that we are all healing together. Um, again, right now, I'm just going to be continuing on on this healing journey today. Um, our guest, uh, Angelica uh, Ogando, will be pushed back until next week. She is definitely a part of this heal healing journey, and you are going to want to hear what she has to say. But right now, tonight, you got me. Sorry. In the meantime, while I continue on with what I was discussing last week, I want to go back to something I said just a minute ago, talking about holding on and not being able to pivot, right? So let me explain what I'm talking about. Often as we are going through traumatic experiences, we, send, we tend to hold on to that trauma. That's what PTSD is, right? We tend to hold on to um, the hurt. We tend to hold on to the person that we've become to be able to deal with that trauma, right? So today, what I want to talk about in the healing journey is letting go and being able to pivot. So let's get into it, right? I want you guys to continue to talk to me in the chat and I will be able to uh, read some of your comments, you know, towards the end of the program or throughout the program. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to dive right into it. So one of the biggest aspects of healing is accepting first, right? We have to be, be able to accept what is happening or what has happened. And I think for us, especially as, a, as black and brown folks, that's hard because we always try to, um, a lot of us are in denial. Let's just be honest about it. Let's just be honest about it. A lot of us are in complete denial about um, things that we're going through, especially while we're in it. And I know a lot of you know those folks that make excuses, right? Oh, well, this is just happening because... 
I don't know, you fill in the blank, right? Uh, this is just happening because uh, uh, I made this choice or I did this or this person isn't a bad person. It's it just something that's going on. Whatever the case is, whatever the excuse is, most times people have a really, really hard time accepting while they're still going through. It's like, that's where that that statement, that comment comes from, hindsight is twenty twenty or Monday morning quarterbacking, because we often don't realize how much we're going through until um, we've gone through it, right? And so with that being said, uh, acceptance is key. Acceptance is key to making sure that you have a good grasp that something is happening. Something is happening in your world. Something is happening to you. Something is happening uh, psychologically. Something is happening in your emotions, in your feelings that's changing you or that's shifting you, right? So you, you have to have that acceptance first, that acknowledgement first that something is actually happening. And then once we, we have that acknowledgement, that's where the trauma comes in, right? Because then we start to feel all over again. It's like, oh my God, this is happening to me. And then we go into those questions of why is this happening to me? Why, what, what is going on in my life? And, and, and we go into disempowering questions. Disempowering questions are always, why is this happening to me? Why do bad things always happen to me? Right. And we have to begin to shift our, our thinking to not why is something always happening to me, because then we, we find ourselves stuck in a victim blaming mentality. And we have to start to say to ourselves, um, why is this happening for me? What is this coming to my life to teach me? Because sometimes trauma is reoccurring until we get the lesson. Now, again, I'm not talking about things that have happened in your past where you had absolutely no um, responsibility for it at all. I'm talking about sometimes the decisions that we make as adults. And, and I'm talking about reoccurring um, outcomes. So instead of saying... Why does this keep happening to me? Why do I keep having this continual outcome? Sometimes you have to begin to say to yourself, what am I supposed to get from this? You guys following me here? What am I supposed to get from this? And why does this keep happening? What lesson am I not getting from this trauma? Why do I keep repeating this? What outcome am I getting from this reaction that's serving me? Ooh, ooh. Because even when we get a negative outcome, sometimes that negative outcome becomes comfortable in our lives. Sometimes that negative outcome is all we know and it's familiar and it feels good. And we may not want to acknowledge the fact that it feels good, but it's so familiar that it's almost like, why not? So I'm gonna give you an example, right? If you're used to having negative uh, uh, relationships it, with, with, and I'm not just talking about romantic relationships, I'm just talking about with anybody. If you're used to having um, negative toxic relationships, if you're used to being in, in toxic conversations or in toxic environments or or just in, in in toxic situations with people what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you continue to be in that toxic environment because it's comfortable for you and why is it normally comfortable for us because we know who we are in those environments so if this person says this i know to react like this if this person does this, I know to do this in return. I know the last time this happened, I did this. I know the last time this happened, I chose this. Or last time I didn't choose this, so I'm going to create this situation so I can choose this response this particular time. You guys following me here? But people end up finding comfort in that. 
we as individuals end up finding comfort in those same outcomes because our behaviors remain the same because we're comfortable in those behaviors. You guys get that? Let me go ahead and read some of these comments that I got coming in because you guys are you guys are talking to me tonight. You, we got comments all over the board. So first of all, hello to everybody that's tuned in tonight because I really just kind of just dove right in and started talking. So uh, if you're just tuning in, this is the Al Show right here on BKS1 Radio. And if you are a new listener, like some of my Spotify listeners, hello and welcome. And you can listen on Spotify. You can watch us on Facebook Live every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. You can watch us on uh, YouTube Live um, every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Or you can listen to us because some of us are at work. Some of us are driving home. Some of us are cooking dinner. You know, you're with the family. You can listen to us live on the TuneIn app. So, let me go back to everybody who's been talking to me and shout out to all of you who are watching. Shout out to Sean Dawson. I, ju I just want you all to know, you pr probably can't really see it through my um, microphone, but this, this, hold on, there we go. Motoko, you guys see that? Motoko. So this is a line from uh, Marcus Dawson and Sean Dawson. And Mordico is an acronym for more to come. Isn't that great? We're talking about the healing journey. Isn't that exactly what we need? Just inspiration to know that there is more to come. There is more to your journey if God or those aliens or whatever it is you all believe in, but there is more to come in your journey. There's more to come for your story. So you might as well get up and try to have a good day because there's more to come if you're still here and if you're still breathing. So that's what this stands for, everybody. This is Motoko and it means more to come. So you guys are going to be seeing me wear a lot more of this brand, a lot more of this um, label right here. But that's just my plug for that. But in the meantime, shout out to you, Sean Dawson, because I know you're watching right now. Uh, shout out to Lucretia. Hey, girl. Shout out to Denise. Shout out to Jason. Uh, shout out to Trish, who is watching right now. Michelle, who is watching right now. So everybody who is uh, commenting to me in the chat. Hey, y'all. And happy Tuesday. Happy snowy Tuesday right here in New Jersey. Shout out to Mr. Wilson. How are you, sir, for tuning in um, tonight? I'm going to get into the comments. So Lucretia was saying, um, that's so true. Jason from Beards and Ballheads, shameless plug right here. Another B great BKS1 radio show saying that he stayed with the wrong, I'm going to fill in the blank, the wrong females too long um, at some times in his life. Uh, and that's maybe one of the the choices that you keep making. You know what, Jason, you're right. And we have talked about this, um, uh, making the choice to be with some of the same people and having some of the same outcomes and why Jason, why? Something about that is gratifying for you. You are getting some sort of gratification by continuing to make the same decisions for some of those same kind of females. We're going to talk about that one behind the scenes, Jason. Uh, we're going to meet up and talk about that. Lucretia said, sometimes we have to look at what we contribute to our circumstances and think of positive, positive solutions. Absolutely. What we're contributing to our circumstances sometimes is that same toxic mindset. And that same toxic mindset is where we get the same toxic decisions and the same toxic uh, outcomes. That's what we're talking about tonight. And we're going to talk about letting go, being able to let go of the trauma so that we can begin to make positive decisions in our life. Um, Denise said, what's happening to a person is mirroring themselves. Ooh. What did Mike say? I'm starting with the man in the mirror, okay? So it's not all about playing the victim and exactly what's happening to us. Sometimes it's about starting in the mirror and saying to myself, oh, wait, I was about to go break in a song and I didn't even know it. <laughs> I was about to break in a song. I'm going to make a change. Isn't that what Mike said, y'all? Isn't that what he said? I'm joking, but I'm so very serious. But I was literally about to go right into the lyrics. And... <laughs> And just break out in the song, but y'all really don't want to hear that. I'm going to just save that for my radio folks right here in studio because they know I'll break out in the song in a heartbeat, even though I cannot sing and I should be singing in the background or not at all. But anyway, 
Yes, Denise, what's happening to a person is mirroring themselves. Uh, Lucretia said, so true. Sometimes we are scared to step out of our comfort zone, even when our comfort zone isn't that comfortable. <sighs> I had to pause for that. I had to pause for that. Even when our comfort zone isn't that comfortable. I'm going to stop right there for a second. So many of us want change in our lives. So many of us want different outcomes in our lives. So many of us want to be different people, want to do different things, want to get to the more to come in our lives, but continue to stay in this zone that's really not comfortable. Why do we do that to ourselves? Why do we do that to ourselves? I'm going to pose this question to you all watching right now or, or listening right now. Is your comfort zone really that comfortable? Or does your comfort zone become more of like a prison? A personal prison that maybe you feel like you have to stay in for whatever reason or another. Something makes you feel like I have to keep making this decision. I have to stay here. Why are we not getting to better? Why can we not get to better? I'm going to pose that question in the Al Show uh, group chat that I just spoke about earlier. Is your comfort zone really that comfortable? Are you really that comfortable there? There has to be something that you don't like, right? So, um, um, you know, you could talk about weight loss. Everybody talks about healthy eating. Everybody talks about weight loss. Everybody knows, especially when you go to the doctor, because we are all people uh, uh, of a certain age, you know, most of us that are watching this show. Um, but we go to the doctor, we get those physicals, we run all of those tests. And um, the doctor will say, oh, you need to lower your cholesterol. I, you know what? I'm being transparent because as soon as I came out of this pandemic, if we are out of the pandemic. But as soon as we came out of this pandemic and I went back to the doctor, that was the first thing he said to me. I had never had any other real medical issues other than that one, right? When I came out and I'm like, lower my cholesterol, what are you talking about? Now I'm over 40, right? And I pretty much kind of still eat everything that I want to eat. Um, for the most part, sometimes, maybe not, whatever. The point is, is that I will sneak it in, but throughout the pandemic, a lot of us became uh, really sedentary. You know, our jobs were um, from home for at least two years for a lot of us, if you if you stayed home. Um, but we were still eating the same. We still had the same diets. And uh, that means your cholesterol was rising because you were moving less and you were absorbing more of the bad foods we were eating. And then the drinking that most of us did on the pandemic, because everybody was just, oh, well, I got a bottle, so I'll be okay, right? So my point is, um, my comfort zone was still having those comfort foods, right? I was still having those comfort drinks, right? Wait a minute. First of all, can I just sidebar real quick? Because y'all know I'm just I'm a Gemini, y'all. So it's like, what was that cartoon movie when they're like, squirrel? And you just look and like everything just kind of just change and you change conversations. But anyway, how about I can't even really drink anymore? <gasps> Those words came out of my mouth. I went through an entire pandemic being able to drink a bottle of wine just to relax, sit out on my deck, and then came out of a pandemic. And now all of a sudden, alcohol gives me migraines. What is that about? whatever. Anyway, so these comfort foods and these comfort drinks that that we all have, knowing better, knowing we should be healthy, knowing that all of us are people of a certain age, a certain size, or have certain health issues, the comfort food really ain't comfortable, is it? It's not comfortable when you have to go to the doctor. It's not comfortable when you're having chest pains. It's not comfortable when you can't sleep at night. For me, having that comfort drink isn't even comfortable because now I have a migraine for the next three days. So I can't have that either. So again, are our comfort zones really comfortable? And I'm, I'm talking about something light right now, just for example, just talking about food and drink. But you have people that have gone through so much trauma in their lives and choose to stay in a comfort zone of creating toxic and negative environments and not being able to let go to get to better. That was my pause and that was my breath to uh, really take in, you know, what we're talking about today. 
But is your comfort zone really that comfortable or is your comfort zone hurting you? <sighs> anyway, let me go back to these comments really quick. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Here we go. Trish said, yes, because change is very difficult for our brains to accept. Hmm, scientific. We don't always realize we are choosing what is familiar. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're choosing what is familiar sometimes at the at our own expense, most time at our own expense if it's not helping us. Shout out to Sean. Hey, Sean. Um, uh, Michelle said, brilliant. Ah, thank you. Uh, Denise said, yes, that's what Michael was speaking about. Yes, looking in the mirror and making a change. Uh, Trish said that was a word. We stay with the turmoil we know instead of uh, entering the unknown. And Lucretia said, comfort zones can be self-bondage or imprisonment because some are scared to step out on faith or unfamiliar territory. If I had not paid for this microphone, it would really be a mic drop moment right now with just that. That is the point of what we are talking about tonight. Your comfort zones really aren't comfort zones for most of us. It's really a prison cell. Well, we do pride ourselves on having the tough conversations here, don't we? <laughs> so how do we get past that? How do we get past that is the question. How do we get to better? How do we get to the more to come? Am I doing that backwards? Let me start this out. More to come. How do we get to the more to come? How do we get to that, right? So a lot of us, the PTSD that we're dealing with um, prevents us from, from getting to better, prevents us from the acceptance, prevents us from the acknowledgement, prevents us from letting go, letting go. Because sometimes staying in those, in the, in the head space where the situation happened, like Trish said, is familiar. And I'd rather stick with the familiar, even if it's hurting me, than venture out into the unknown. Yikes. I would rather stick with the familiar that's hurting me than to venture out into the unknown, even if the unknown will help me to be better. Even if the unknown will heal my circumstances, my situation, me as a person, my relationships, the folks around me, my financial situation, whatever it is. We tend not to think about what fear of the unknown is fear that things can go bad, but we, we, we tend not to think about the unknown could be a completely different and better life for us. Why do we always focus on that negative? What is that? Why is that so innate in us as human beings that we tend to focus on the unknown being negative? The unknown has to be negative. It has to be scary. It has to be um, worse than what we've always gone through. Because after all, I might, might as well stick with what I know because at least I know it. <gasps> How many of us have said that? How many of us have said that? How many of us have said that? I'm going to be completely honest and completely transparent with you. I've stayed in relationships because I was like, you know what? I might as well stick with the devil I know. Sorry, I didn't mean to call the people I was with in the past devils, y'all. But I, I have stayed in relationships uh, for extended periods of time because I felt like it was better to stick with the devil I knew than to move on to somebody else and, and it potentially be worse. I've stayed at jobs past their expiration date. Why? Because, well, at least I know these people here. At least I know when Sarah comes in, she's going to have an attitude at least until after she has her coffee or at least until after lunch. And then I'll be able to deal with it. I already, I already know her. I already know this. I already know how this goes. I already know my boss is only going to be mad for this amount of time or I'll only get partially written up or something. And, and you know what? But even though the job isn't serving me because I'm not making enough money, even though the relationship isn't serving me because maybe you're not fulfilled, but I'm gonna just stick with it because it's just what I know and it's familiar. Why do we do that? Why do we limit ourselves? 
Why? Because we start off with limiting questions. We start off with disempowering questions. Why is this happening to me? Oh, woe is me. Why? Why is this happening to me? You're already starting off playing the victim. Oh, and why do black folks? Yes, black folks. We, I'm talking about y'all. Why do, why do why do why do we hate when people say that? I'm not playing the victim. <laughs> Maybe that's just an African American culture, but we literally hate when people say that. Um, but my point my point is we we tend to uh, want to stick with the familiar for fear of the unknown, not knowing that the unknown can be a million times better than what it is that we're dealing with. So getting back to my point of letting go, the process of letting go. So until you accept, until you acknowledge, and until you confront what is going on in your life, you'll never be able to let go. You got to do the work. And that's what we talk about here on The Healing Journey, right here on BKS1 Radio and The Owl Show, your girl, Latoya Chanel. That's what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about The Healing Journey. And, and don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. This is not me preaching to anyone who is watching or listening to this show. I'm talking to myself. I mean, I said last week, I might as well not use you all as a vlog, as a video uh, journal uh, of my own for my own healing, but I am absolutely doing that. So as I mentioned last week, while I am healing myself, the hope is that sharing this journey, shout out to Sean Dawson again, um, that sharing this journey will also help to heal some of you too, that we can all heal together through something that we may uh, be going through, through conversation. So that's why as I'm talking to you all and you all are talking back to me, I'm reading everyone's comments. You know, maybe we can all find a new thought to think that can get us over a bridge or can get us over a hump in this journey so that we can all begin to make different decisions, new decisions, better decisions for our lives. So please don't think that I'm sitting up here behind this microphone just because I have a platform preaching to everybody about what they should do. Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm mm. Mm mm. If you missed last week's show, uh, that is not where I am in my life and I probably won't ever get there. But right now, this is for me just as much as this is for you. So we, we are going to come up with solutions together. I am going to pose whatever issues um, that I'm seeing uh, because I have the platform. But the solutions we are going to come up with together through the discussions of this show and the discussions of the group that... Um, you know, we now have right here on Facebook where we're going to be able to um, talk about it. So Denise said in our chat, just to go back, Denise said, we have to be uncomfortable to level up. Yeah, you got to get out of a box. You have to get out of a box in order to get to where you want to go. You can't stay in a box and get anywhere. That's impossible. You got to come out of that box. You got to come out of that comfort zone in order to be able to do that. Um, Sean said, I had to learn how to live uncomfortable. Ooh. I had to learn how to live uncomfortable. I never like to be comfortable because I feel that I'm stuck. Courage. Can you say courage? Can y'all come out with another line that says courage across here, Sean? I keep doing it from here to here because that's what I'm used to doing. I need to do from here to here. Okay. Can y'all come out with another line that says courage right here? Because it takes courage to just live uncomfortable just so that you're able to grow. That takes courage. And I'm not calling all of us cowards, but I'm saying a lot of us don't have the strength and the energy to be able to do that. So how do we get to that? How do we make the decisions? How do, how do we make the decisions to let go of pain, to let go of trauma, to let go of toxic energy, toxic relationships um, with, with ourselves? I'm not talking about romantic. I ain't even talking about friends and family yet. I'm just talking about toxic relationships with ourselves because when we repeat certain cycles in our lives, those are toxic relationships we have within ourselves. That's for us. So how do we let go of that? 
Because a part of healing and a part of the healing journey is letting go. How do we do that? Well, I mean, I know I'm in therapy. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> but it's one step at a time. And that sounds cliche as hell. Cliche as hell. Wait, Norm, is there any kind of, you know, can I say hell on Spotify? I don't know, but I, I just said it. Um, but um, I know it sounds cliche as I don't know what, but um, letting go is one step at a time. Acknowledge where you are in your life. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy with yourself? And you don't have to have this conversation with other people if you don't want to. This is a conversation you can have in yourself in a still room by yourself, in your car by yourself. Are you happy with yourself? Are you happy with the things that are going on in your life? And if your answer is no, in whatever area, because you know what? Listen, we are multidimensional people. We could be happy and successful in one area and completely struggle in another. You don't have to be an all around, just down and out person in order to want to go to therapy or in order to want change. It could be one specific area that you want to work on. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, Norm just said human resources will call you in the morning for saying hell. Oops, said it again. Sorry. But in the meantime, um, you don't have to be an all around bad person or down and out or downtrodden person to want change. You can just want change in just one specific area uh, of your life. And that's OK. You can want to be better in one area or grow in one in multiple areas. It doesn't have to be your whole life is a complete and utter mess. That doesn't have to be the case in order for you to get help or seek counseling. Right. But the process of letting go and the process of healing um, are, is literally just with one step at a time. And it's the steps that you make on that journey that count. But you have to be intentional. So I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, and maybe you all agree with me and maybe you don't. Intentionality. Mm, I can't say it. Y'all say it. Intentionality. Did I say that right? Do I sound stupid? Intentionality, intentionality, into whatever. You know what? I get this from my mother. My mother does that, you know, making sure we're sending out a word so that we don't sound terrible. It just so happens I'm doing it in front of my, on a platform in front of all of y'all, but whatever. Um, intentionality, if I'm saying it correctly, um, is one step. It's, it's a characteristic that we have to have in order to be able to make the steps. All right. Am I saying that correctly? Intentionality is a characteristic that we must have in order to be able to make the first step. <sighs> okay. I think I said that right. Um, because you're not going to make that step to even ask yourself the question of, am I happy? A lot of times we just we just go with the flow. It doesn't matter if I'm happy or not. This is life. How many times have you had conversations with people? I'm going back to hell, Spotify. Um, how many times have you had conversations with people and they're like, no, hell is right here. We're living through hell right now. It's hell on earth. How many, how many times have you had conversations with people that that is their life philosophy and that is how they feel? And you're like, well, I don't feel like I'm completely in hell. I have, I have happy times. I have love in my life and my relationships with people. I don't feel like I'm necessarily living in hell. And they'll, they will, they will argue you down because that's just what they're going through. And that's their experience, right? And you can't negate, you know, people's experiences that feel that way. But um, my point is, is that you have to be intentional about wanting better for yourself. And so the first step is to ask yourself, are you happy? I'm on a healing journey. I know that I want to be better. Question one, are you happy? And if the answer to that question is no, then you got to keep going on. You got to take the next step. If you're not happy, what area are you not happy in? And then once you identify that area, then it becomes a number of steps. Okay, what can I begin to do about this area? How can I get help? Maybe it's counseling. Maybe for some people it is going for a walk or doing some stretching or meditating or prayer or, or um, you know, listening to motivational 
uh, messages or, or doing some writing or doing some, some journaling or, you know, all the stuff that we take for granted. And we're like, yeah, that's cliche. That's not going to work. That's all the stuff that really, if you actually take the time out to do it, all it really helps you to do is have more introspection. It helps you to learn more about yourself. It, ha it helps you to have more time to think about who you are, what you are, for us in the, in, in, who are spiritual, whose we are, and what it is we want for our lives and how to get there. That's all journaling does. That's what therapy does. You ever realize, for those of you who have ever been to therapy, it's not a bunch of you need to, you need to, you need to. It's questions. It's helping you to come to some sort of conclusion about what it is you want and who you are and why you do certain things. So the journaling so that you can go back and read it to, to, to see outside of yourself for a minute. The walking with nature is really for you to spend time communing with you in your own thoughts because we're so busy and 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 we're so occupied and we're so um um what is it overly extended you know we're always on even right now even in 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 social media you know we're always on we're always connected sometimes you have to you have to pull back sometimes you have to disconnect in order to be able to commune with yourself to be able to know who you are and to know who it, what it is that you want so yes those things all sound cliche but those things are really geared towards introspection knowing more about yourself so that you can be a better version or the best version of yourself but a part of the healing journey is making sure that you take those steps so that you can get to that next version of you, so that you can get to the more to come. I did it right this time. For everybody that's on Spotify, y'all can't see the hoodie that I have on, but I, I keep pointing in the wrong direction, whatever, it's a whole thing. But um, to be able to get to more to come, to be able to get to the next phase in your story, you're going to have to make some different decisions. You're going to have to make some hard decisions. And the purpose of this entire discussion, there are some things that you're going to have to let go. Part of your healing journey is letting go. And for us, for some of us, and for most of us, that's the hardest part. Whether it's letting go of people, places, or things, or even worse than people, places, or things, the ideas that we have in our head. The ideas that we have about ourselves, the ideas that we have about the world, the ideas about what we feel it is that we deserve. Ooh, ooh. I'm okay. I can work this low paying job because you know what? I really don't deserve more than this. I'm okay. I can stay in this relationship that's really not doing much for me because you know what? I deserve this. I, I Maybe I messed up in the past or, or maybe this is just what it is. It's okay. I can stay in this particular body because you know what? Maybe I've been unhealthy all my life. So you know what? Eh, why change it now? Like I said, we're all of a certain age. Why change it now? Maybe I just deserve that. Maybe I don't deserve to be healthier, happier, more wealthy or more prosperous. These are the things that we tell ourselves. So we continue to make decisions to stay there. These are things that I want to talk about as we continue to go on um, this healing journey. I want to talk about how we let go, when we should be letting go, and what are the first steps of letting go. Let me get back to the comments here because I know that there were some more uh, in here. Uh, so Lucretia said, a lot of us question our own decisions or second guess ourselves because of our past failures. Absolutely. What did Aaliyah say? If at first you don't succeed, dust yourself off and try again. Now I know that is a lot easier to say. I know that is a lot easier to say than it is to, um, actually do. Um, but in order to get to the more to come, you got to keep keep going. You can't stay stuck. And that's and hopefully that is an inspirational message for someone. Because guess what? I had that inspirational message just for me to sit on this platform. I had someone to tell me, Latoya, keep going. Latoya, there's more to your story. You have to keep going. You can't quit now. 
You have to keep going. And so that is the message that I received. And I'm, I'm, I'm sharing that with all of you. You got to keep going. Whatever it is, whatever area that you're working in on yourself, you have to keep going. Um, oh, Denise, I guess you were talking about with me trying to say intentionality. Okay. Cause you know, I struggle with that. Um, <laughs> And Lucretia was saying, living an intentional life is so powerful. Isn't it though? You know, thinking about what you're thinking about is one of the most underrated um, method of living a fully conscious and intentional life. Take a step back and think about what you're thinking about. Why? it makes sense or does not make sense. That's what I'm gonna leave you with. That's what I'm gonna leave you with today. Cause I, I got a few more minutes for the show. Two questions for you. Is your comfort zone comfortable? And are you thinking about what you're thinking about? I think those are good. I think those are really, really good questions. And guess what? I'm gonna challenge you throughout the week. So yes, I'm gonna be back. God willing, next week, same time, same place, you know, talking about this healing journey. Um, and I will have a guest with me uh, next week. But um, I want to challenge you for the next seven days to ask yourself in areas that are comfortable but are not beneficial to you, um, is your comfort zone comfortable? And I'm going to challenge you to think about what you're thinking about every single day for whatever area it is that you're struggling in. Think about what you're thinking about and start asking yourselves the questions. Why do I think that? Am I doing that just because that's what my parents did? Am I doing that because that's a trauma response for something that I've been through? Am I doing that because that's just what the culture says I'm supposed to think? Am I doing that because I got some bad advice at some point in time back in the day? Am I thinking that because, I don't know, just whatever. I read something somewhere once. But the point is, is, that, is that thought serving you? Is that thought empowering you? And is that thought getting you to the next step of the person that you want to be? Right? Okay. All right, listen, y'all, it's eight o'clock. The show is literally only an hour and we started a little late today. Like I said, we've had some te technical difficulties and my guest that was advertised to be on the show will be on the show next week. So I do apologize for anyone who tuned in to uh, watch her. She, Miss Oganda, will be in, on the show um, next week and we are going to have a great uh, and positive interview with, with her and you don't want to miss it because there's a lot that she has to speak on. I heard her speak and it was absolutely um, amazing and I know you all will enjoy it too and it will definitely help you um, on this particular healing journey um, as it helped me. I truly believe that and I wish that for you. Um, in the meantime, uh, the show is coming to a close. So for everyone who watched today, thank you all so much. You all know I love you for watching and I love you for listening. Bye, everybody.